sometimes even if by having people helping me, like this case, I'm usually kind of used to doing things myself, per, per se, meaning everything's kind of, my hand is involved with the process. And so having people help me this time is, sometimes that's kind of needs a lot of impotence. This is like, okay, we need to get this up here. <laughs> Jason, let's do it now. Okay, yeah, you're right, you're right, let's do it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the normally before, um, I think there's, like, when I've created things on site where I've traveled, and that was that was going to be a possible option, too, is that I would, I would come here and make it from scratch. I think okay, I'll get materials, and I've done a lot of shows like that, and they're really fun, but they're also very taxing, because then, like, there's always this one point where I'm like, I don't have enough material. But then all of a sudden, I somehow find find that, that point. So it's like that, I think it's I like the, that setup of impending failure. But about putting it somehow up, aside getting, from one hand? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, it, usually it's actually the point of decision making, like just knowing, almost getting to a point to let go. Like where, where like, I get very caught up in you know where it's going to do and wh where it's going to hang and how it's going to react to the space, and then like I almost have to get to a point where I got to go. Okay, it needs, it needs to go up. It needs to go up. It needs to go here. And it, it really, if it's an inch this way, it doesn't matter. But it takes a long. That's probably the hardest I find. Just being here too, even just doing some of these forms, there gets to a point where like I know I just need to put it up there and like let go and and not. But at the same time, there's like that process that has to happen, you know, where you're like mulling it over and go rock, walk around the building for a second. This piece is called Trousseau Negligé Number no. 1, and it's part of a series of heirloom objects that I'm constructing out of cosmetic facial peel. I essentially cover my whole body with it, and once it dries, I peel it off in one large piece or hide that... Um, basically begins to function as fabric for me to construct these garments. Really looking at the material is realizing how plasticky and almost kind of durable it is. I mean, it is this discarded, um, thin, fragile material, but when you really start to play with it and pull it and fuse it together, you realize it actually lends itself to this, to this um, other existence as fabric. The negligee piece I've originally conceived of to display by itself, and the wallpaper piece I originally conceived of to display by itself. So um, Mara and Eric and Namita somehow together or separately came to the, to the idea of displaying them together, which I really love. I mean, they both, um, they create a new conversation between each other, which is really nice. And, um, they, they play off of each other's kind of traditional domestic and feminine and decorative qualities. The wallpaper is printed with a block printing process with blood. Um, so again, it comes back to the body and the mark of the body, the, um, and even you could say the detritus of the body. <laughs> I ch specifically chose to create a series of doilies that reference the radial structure of coronaviruses. And so each um, virus represents the structure of a different virus, including hepadna, herpes, HIV, influenza, and SARS. And each one has a very unique structure that you can see um, once, and, and you can maybe even recognize once you read the, the card, the title card, but at, at first glance, they really just look like traditional doilies. Well, I've been working with recycled tin cans for 20 years, and essentially, these are materials packaging that what people would normally throw away. But by taking it, opening up the tin can it, and it, as a flat sheet, it's now my raw material. Well, at the time I was making these, I was using a lot of quilt patterns. Mm -hmm. So th I, that's a traditional craft of women sewing and putting things together in small bits of fabric. But here I'm taking metal and actually assembling it as a triangle triangular forms to create patterns. Mm -hmm. And then the patterns in this particular piece uh, are uh, enhanced by the use of the colors mm -hmm. which go around the piece. Kids see the packaging that they might see in the grocery store and now it's a tin can made into a sculpture. 
the colors, the patterns, the words. They can actually look for things that they identify in the work. My, in, my tin cans are not only my raw material, but sometimes my inspiration. Mm -hmm. The advertising, the messages on the tin cans. Also, we create an identity in our society by the products that we buy, mm -hmm. such as uh, a product name on a sweatshirt or our underwear. And so it's hard for us to escape for the media blitz of advertising and manufactured objects. We are part of a consumer society. We, were, are, we are bombarded by consumer products. Uh, the cups in Consuming Conversation are about our consumer society and how instead of having a cup of tea or coffee with our mother or our grandmother, you would go to the shopping mall and and that's your experience. That's like, your social interaction of, yeah. with your relatives or your friends. It's where people are now substituting shopping as their entertainment. Uh, I'm taking the most mundane of material, something that people would throw away, and then using that as my inspiration. Everyday materials transformed mm -hmm. into something extraordinary.